Hey guys, Cutter Up Rob here. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick, a quick breakdown on reading a common rail injector test sheet um, from a Bosch machine. So it's a Bosch EPS 205. Um, it's designed for testing common rail injectors and then mechanical injectors as well, but um, it's actually designed for common rail injectors. So here's the test sheet. And so easiest, you can, um, we always give a sheet with ours when we give a breakdown or we give a breakdown of what all the tests are. But um, so your first lines here are, are gonna be your injector part number or the part number that the injector was tested as, as there is a bunch of different part numbers that, that fall under the same category. Um, but usually the injector number that's on the injector will be the injector that would be tested by. It gives you your manufacturer, and then it gives you a profile, your activation profile, which just really has nothing to do with that, and then a description of what type of injector it is. Um, then you can also add um, a serial number in there, and usually what we do is we'll just do, you know, if you bring us six injectors, it'll be one of six. We mark the injectors um, one through six or one through eight or however many you bring. But anyways. So if you look through here, um, at the very top, you can see where it says um, test step, whoop, test step, activation time, pressure, uh, measurement time, um, injected fuel quantities, return quantities, and then whether pass or fail, so the evaluation. Um, so your first test on this one, um, your leak test, if you come through here, so it'll give you your PSI that it ran out, Time, seconds it ran and then obviously because it's a leak test there's no um, injected fuel or shouldn't be um, and then your set value on here so you're 24 and a half plus or minus 24 so that's how much it's allowed to be up to um, so obviously like it could be zero and it's okay or it could be um, 49 which I wouldn't like to see it up that high. Um, I usually try to stay pretty close to, you know, for a, a per se good injector, you want to be, a, you definitely want to be on the low side of the spec. <clears throat> and then the actual value that the injector had. Um, so then the next one is just the leak test again. Um, and then basically it just, it, it's at a higher pressure for a longer period. And then same, same return values. And this one was 13. So VL, and VL stands for full load test. Um, your activation times, um, or pulse width, I guess you would say, um, 1700 at 180 MPA and 90 seconds. So, and then your set value being 160 plus or minus 8.3. Um, this one was 59.43, so that part of is good. And then you come into your return values and it actually failed the return values. Um, that's why you're using this one for instance. <clears throat> so on the return on full load, your return, your 39 and a half plus or minus 29 and a half. And this one was 72, which is more than 39 and a half and 29 and a half added together. So it gives it a fail. Um, now if you have, so this truck would run, even if it had six injectors that were like this, because it passed all the rest of the tests. This truck would run, and the only time that you would have problems if you had six of these injectors that were like that is if you were at full load, let's say pulling a really heavy trailer or something like that up a big hill, you would, I shouldn't even say that, under heavy acceleration with a heavy load, um, you will get rail pressure codes, low rail pressure codes. Shut the truck off, start again, they'll go away, and until you start running it again, it, you'll be fine again. Um, this is a really common thing on six sevens, and I don't care, like every six seven, all of them. Um, they don't fail like the fives nines did where they failed and flooded cylinders. The six sevens aren't bad for that, um, but they are bad for having return issues. Um, and a lot of that is uh, general wear and tear, and then also not having fuel conditioner and also not getting uh, fuel filter changes as often as it should with a good quality filter. Um, so now we'll go, we'll finish on here. So your EM um, is an emissions test point um, it, and it tests at 700, um, or sorry, at um, activation time is 700, your pressure at 60 MPA, your time at 40 seconds, 
and then your set value there again 27.3 plus or minus 5.6 this one was 24 so it was a pass um, your next one down being LL which is your idle test um, your activation on it is 800 pressure 25 for 40 seconds and your 9.9 .9 plus or minus 5.1 um, and there again, this one was good. It was 7.57. Now, you will get on that idle test if the injector starts to get worn, the nozzle gets worn, this number usually goes wonky. Um, not always, but they do go wonky. Um, and then the next one on this one um, is VE, which is your pre-ignition test. Um, so your pre-ignition on firing um, and your activation time on that one's 250 um, yeah, 250, your V, which, now the last one is VE, and your 250 activation time, um, 140 MPA, 40 seconds, and your 2 plus or minus 1.7, and it is 1.83, so it is good. So basically when you're reading this, for the most part, all you have to do is you look for a, a you know, a, a, the, the check mark that's bad. And then on this test, on these, on all of your load tests, this is where you're going to have, you could have both of these fail. So if they were to fail in here, as far as the load side of things go, um, you'll see, you'll see numbers in here, but there was no numbers for it. So yeah, obviously there's nothing returned and it's not going to read it, but <clears throat> you want to, uh, you want to make sure, like especially on returns, if your if your feeds were too high and all of the injectors were the same, um, that one doesn't really matter because that means either you have a bigger nozzle or they were the float a little bit more aftermarket nozzle rebuilt aftermarket whatever it may be. But that's a quick rundown on it. And like I said, we when we test them, we actually give this sheet with with it, and it gives you a breakdown of the information on the testing. Um, you know, and all the different tests, and these are different tests for different injectors and stuff. Um, yeah. So that is, uh, you know, a quick breakdown on reading one of these. Um, and maybe I'll do another one. When I get one that's really wonky, um, I'll give another, I'll do another one. So this, this injector was for a, let's say a 2013 Ram with a Cummins in it, um, is what these injectors were for. Um, and like I said, all the six sevens are bad for having return issues. You know, if you're having a truck that um, you're having issues with um, the truck having rail pressure code, low rail pressure code issues um, under full load, pretty good chance that it's probably um, has to do with um, returns on your injectors. Um, So anyways, uh, that's the video on that one, guys. Um, we'll catch you next one. Thanks.